Hello, good afternoon, Prananga. Hope you're all well. Uh, I'm just going to go through all my usual checks. Uh, as you can see, we've got a spoon in the vice. And I'll just explain why we've got this set up slightly different to normal. That's all working fine. Yeah, um, you'll notice we've got these two pieces of wood here. It's basically because of the nature of this spoon, uh, we have to have something just to protect it around the outside there. Otherwise, when you're squeezing it in the vise, it's too easy uh, to actually break it. Now, what we're going to do then, we've got like this, I think it's sort of, uh, I don't know what you call it, like... Um, Basically, it's this leaf surround. So this is what they wanted. Um, so we're gonna, what do you call it? A laurel leaf. Hello, Tommy. Thank you for joining us. Hope everything is well. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is to do all of our stop cuts, starting off. So we do the stop cuts this surround. And um, give you a background on this one here. They wanted the laurel leaves, they wanted the hearts with the initials and the daffodil, but it is a slightly... Tell the truth, Dave. What's that? I forgot to uh, leave a little bit on the side, didn't I? Yeah, well, we, originally we were going to do, we were going to leave a bit there, but it doesn't matter. What we've done is to rig up a, a, a setup, as you can see, where we're protecting the edges of the spoon. We've got two blocks underneath as well. So that gives us, um, that sort of protects the spoon through the whole width. I got carried away. Um, you would obviously enjoy in yourself on the, on the scroll saw. What I was going to explain is that they want some, th this surround is quite elaborate, but the budget was somewhat limited. Um, so the difficulty with this particular one then is that I can't sort of spend as much time. Basically, I'm going to carve it as, as we always do to the best of our ability, but I am conscious about the amount of time I can spend on this project. I would have preferred the budget to have been a little more flexible because then we, we could have really, um, we could have done a bit more with it. So that's why they're quite simple, the laurel leaves because we were, we were quite sort of restrained on it. But it's an interesting opening because this is the nature of what we do. This is, this is our job, this is what we do for a living and you can't sort of spend a ridiculous amount of time on a project if, um, if you're not gonna be able to recoup the, the money back for, for the time that you spent on it. Still means that we can do a nice job, but as I was saying, we would have preferred to have been uh, to have had slightly more flexibility, let's say, when it came to the budget. So what you're going to see is starting to do. We're starting to work on all of those stop cuts. So we're cutting down into the wood, and then there's that sort of uh, there's the stem of the spoon. So just dropping those levels down. And then once we've dropped the levels of that, we're going to shape each and every one of the leaves. And then we'll just do a little bit of detail on them. Not a lot, but enough. And so, as you can see, we're, we're working on those stop cuts. What we'll then have to decide is how my initial thought is to use a gouge that actually Dad has taken in the back. He's doing some sharpening for us this afternoon. I just feel we've reached that stage. So I'm just gonna shape, as you can see. Yeah, we've reached that stage with the gouges where they, excuse me, really are now in need of a little bit of a sharpen. So we're just gonna shape the leaves in the one direction. And do the same, shape them in the other direction. And then we just put a little we we'll just probably score a little line. May even try using the V gouge, the V-shaped gouge, to score just a little bit of detail on the inside. So you can see one in that direction and one in the opposite direction. Yeah, that should be just like so. And that's basically we're going to go all the way around that surround in that sort of style. 
Now, um, one of the things as well, when it comes to this spoon, we would have liked, we would have preferred to have had something up here as well at the top, just to protect that section of the spoon. Uh, but I thought, to be honest with you, I thought it was gonna detract from the design itself. So we've ended up leaving it without. But what we would do, we've already told the customer, we'd recommend hanging it here or here, as opposed to hanging it from there. It's just those simple little practical things that you're constantly thinking about in the designing of having um, a design that sort of works on a uh, yeah on a more practical level. Again, some something that we have to take into consideration are those sort of practical aspects. Uh, hopefully the uh, oh we got the carver. Hello there. Hope the uh, vacations are going well. Hope you're making progress as well. Be nice to see a few of the different uh, shots of how you're getting on. It's an absolute scorcher. Yeah? Don't say that very often in Wales, but it's uh, yeah, it's pretty hot here. We're enjoying a, a mini heat wave, they're calling it. So nice for a change. And thankfully, being in the workshop. Dad built his workshop so it was nice and cool when it's hot outside because he's not the he's not the biggest fan of the sun. So you can see we're just getting those shapes as we go along, working on all of those stop cuts. I'm going to change tack. I'm just going to come across just so we've got something different going on at the same time. So already you can start to see we're building up. Um, the, the shape of that surround. That is very much gonna be sort of the main focus of this particular love spoon, then, is that, that laurel leaf surround. I do believe from what they told us that this particular, um, this particular love spoon, there's a Welsh Greek, I think that's, from memory, if memory serves, those are the two sort of symbols. So you've got the daffodil for Wales and the laurel leaf then for, for Greece. So you're just going to get that. We want the depth. So we're trying to get the depth on all the different, different parts of the design. So same as usual, we're carving in that one direction. We will then turn it around in the vise and then we will carve back in the opposite direction. We're trying to get as well a little bit more depth on these parts of the design. So we're just pushing all of that down as well. Back over and a little bit of detail. So what I'm basically gonna do is our usual sort of routine where we get as much carving done in the one direction as possible. We then turn it around in the vise and carve back in the opposite direction. We've had a fairly busy week in the workshop. I'll ask everyone as well. Andres, hello there. Thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the, the live stream. Hopefully it'll be useful. Any questions or any thoughts or anything, let us know. It's always great to hear from yourselves. And I'll put it out there as always. Let us know in the comment section what you're working on, what you're up to. As I said, I know the carver's uh, been uh, doing a bit of work on, on vacation and also enjoying, I hope, as well. But ourselves, yeah, we've had a, a busy week with different things going on. We have finally managed to get my wife's mum and dad across to see her. So that's the first time she's seen her mum and dad in 18, uh, sorry, in 20 months now. So that's a bit of good news for ourselves. And I think Dad is just coming in now as well. You got a few gouges that you sharpened up for me? We're getting there. Yeah. So we're gonna continue working on this surround. And it's one of those ones as well. Last week in the live stream, what we were doing were things that we do on a daily basis. As with this one, we're sort of back to uh, where we're we're feeling our way as we go, really. So, there's a little element of, uh, I don't wanna say making it up as you're going along, but it is in a way, isn't it? 
Well, there's all sorts of expressions for that. Winging it. So you can see. You can hear in the background as well. That's Thomas the Woodcarver just um, stropping gouges on his shorts. I used to do this on my hand, but I managed to get like a dermatitis type of thing and I pushed the oil into my skin, so I don't do it any longer. You I just much rip, prefer to rip, rip, the rip your shorts, shorts instead. So we just come in along, getting that shape of all the leaves. That's one done. Some of them are a little bit longer than others. What happens, see, as you're designing, to make the design work, sometimes we have to make the leaves longer, sometimes shorter. Oh, there's Nico. We got Nico here as well. Do you want to say hello to everyone, Nico? Hello. Hello. Oh, we got the carver. It's hello and hola. Hello, hello. Oh, hello. wow. Nine hours drive. Wow. That is a long drive. Fair dues to you. That is a very long drive. Hope, uh, yeah, hope all is well. Hope you've had a nice break. Here we go. So you can see we're going to carry on. Uh, yeah, nice to get away. We're hoping uh, we're hoping in early August to be able to do the same. But I am also hoping that we're going to be able to do some live streams while while we're away. Or possibly, you'll have to ask everyone. There we are. So you can see. Can you see Dad, what Daddy is doing, Nico? We're just building. Your, your Gramps, Thomas the Woodcarver, just dropped the gouge on the floor that he was stopping there. That was the noise in the background. And we're going to continue just building up these shapes. Now I'm hoping. Your fingers over there. I'm hoping that this gouge here. Yeah, that's doing. This is the one that I'm hopeful is going to be able to shape, do a lot of the shaping for us. How's it cut in? Yeah, cut in nicely. But I'm a bit sort of betwixt and between. There's another one now. Cut that one. At the moment, just to give you an idea of what's going through my head, I'm a little bit... Um, I'll take this one and this one now. Okay. At the moment, I'm a little bit betwixt and between on in terms of my method here. I can't... I'm sorting out which is going to be the gouge, and this is this is what sort of happens. This is why I always say, do the most complex part of it first of all. And this was always my concern with this particular project, is having the right gouge to shape these leaves. You've also got that one. Yeah, that's showing me a different one. That may help because it's got slightly more of a curve, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's going to be a better job. I can sharpen that one up. Yeah, if you can too. sharpen that one up. This is what happens, see, because it's a I job. Yeah, brilliant, thanks. Because it's not a job, this one here, this isn't a job that we're doing sort of on a um, on a daily basis. It's a bespoke spoon, it's a one-off, and I'm looking for the best solution for shaping the leaves. And that's what I'm sort of just, not struggling with, but that's the thought process that I'm going through is what is going to be the right gouge for that particular job. I think that one now that Dad is just sharpening up for me, that should hopefully do the job for me. I'm looking for, a, as I said, a simple solution with it because I am sort of um, under the pressure of time with this particular project because it was quite a limited uh, budget for it. But we, despite the limited budget, we still want to be able to do it justice. And as always, we're always looking to produce the best quality job. Here we are. So I'm going to pull that down just a little bit in the vise. Going to continue shaping, getting our shape for our leaves. So we get the one side and the other side, get those stock cuts sorted out. And it's always it's one of those cases when it's very difficult. We, I know it's something we've discussed a number of times through the channel, through the live streams, all sorts of things. Pricing and stuff like that, really difficult thing because until you actually take the job on, 
we don't 100% know how long it's going to take us. So even as I'm working on this, depending on how the process of shaping these goes, that is going to dictate. I know these elements in the centre are not going to take me too long. So for instance, doing the entwined hearts, doing the initials, doing the daffodil, they're things that we do on a regular basis. So you have a, a pretty good idea for how long they're going to take us. But this leaf surround, I'm very conscious at the moment of how long that's going to keep me uh, busy for. Again, though, there's nothing ever lost with it, even if it does take me longer than I would hope. There's nothing lost, because in the future, if somebody asks for a similar project, you, you know, you know where you are with things. You say, well, I know that when I did that previously, it took X amount of time to, to, to actually do. Brilliant. Yeah, so nice, nice shape. One? Yeah, do you want to sharpen that one for me now? So let's have a look. This is the one that Dad has just sharpened, and I am hopeful. Yeah, see. But we've got to remember with this, because we got that paper drawer in, what will happen is that um, we will we got to get a bit of depth to each of the leaves because we got that. We've also then got to sand it afterwards to get rid of all the paper. So hopefully, if you're wondering as well, why why would you you know sort of take on a job then that you're sort of a bit in between with? If I'm being honest, I I took this on because I like the idea, I like the design, and I thought I'll enjoy carving it. So, and I know that shouldn't be part of your thought process really when it comes to business, but got to, got to enjoy doing what you do. So. I thought it would be a nice design, something different to what we would normally do. And that's why I said, oh, okay, we give it a go. And sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong, but you live and you learn. For those of you as well wondering on the wood, it's our usual most popular choice of wood. It's the oak again, it is. And it's a harder piece of oak, which again is making things just a little bit more challenging the carving but it's all good fun that's what we do we enjoy it there we are we've marked it out as usual with that vertical grain some of the things i've done in terms of the preparation then i've already carved out the bowl of the spoon so that aspect is done we've carved it and sanded it it's the same process then for um getting the the profile so you can start off using uh, the scroll saw, so scroll saw it all out, get those shapes, and I'm yeah, I'm starting to, I'm starting to relax a little bit. I can see, I can see to a degree where we're going here. Now I mentioned that we've had a, a busy week. We've had everything from designing spoons to um, preparing, preparing some different ones ready for carving. We're actually now at a, at a stage where I think we're fully booked when it comes to bespoke spoons for the rest of the year, which is good and bad, because it means that we've been fortunate having some orders coming in, but it also means that uh, any requests now, unfortunately, it's gonna be difficult for us to do them in time, depending on when they're, when they're wanted for. Thomas Woodcarver's just walked back in. I'm going to ask for a, a second opinion. What do you reckon? Are we... Is it going in the right direction? Silence. Silence is golden, golden. I think that'll be fine. There we are. That's the plan, is to shape each leaf in the one direction. At the end of the day, it's a, an impression. Absolutely. That's the plan. Shape the leaves in the one direction, then turn it round, and then shape it in the other way. Makes sense to me. Thank you very much. Yeah, we've been doing some um, filming as well. I've been uh, thinking about some different ideas, some different things to hopefully um, help out. 
the latest uh, upload that I put on, which is it won't go up, it won't go live on the channel for some time. But it was actually thinking in terms of it scroll saw development. Um, yeah, it goes in there, and that was focusing on. on no, yet, brilliant. That was um, focusing on that quick release clamp. So that was a, a conversation that I had with the carver was uh, when he realised that there was something different between our scroll saw and his, and that's what it is. It's that quick release clamp. So I've done a little video talking about why we use a quick release clamp and who a quick release clamp would be useful for on a scroll saw. So sweet to see this in my feet. I was just thinking about these spoons as well. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, work in progress. Thank you for joining us. Hope it will be interesting. So you can see the idea, what we do see, is we share the process um, of, of, how we, uh, of how we go about carving our love spoons. So I mean, the love spoon is a great tradition. It's great material to work in as well, working in wood. And the nice thing with the love spoon, there's so many different things that you can do and different st styles. And we do so many, you know, we have so many requests for sort of so many original things that, like this one here. So things like entwined hearts and daffodils, they're fairly sort of standard commonplace requests. But this uh, laurel leaf surrounds this is a new, a new request, but something that we, we enjoy. On the bench, we've got a few other spoons and they're slightly more standard requests, but that's what keeps it interesting for us is, you know, gives us a bit of a challenge when somebody asks us, can you do such and such? And um, I mean, in this example, where they've got a bit of a limited uh, budget with it. Again, that presents a slightly different challenge for us. Can we get the job done? You've always got to give yourself a little challenge. Oh, there we are. Hola, Yelly. Hola, todo el mundo en la casa de lado. There we are. My wife, is. she's actually watching one of my live streams. So she's in next door with my, uh, with my in-laws. And they're actually watching a live stream, which is uh, yeah, brilliant. You joined us. Yeah, this is it's the first. I can't remember the, the last time Yelly hasn't seen many of my live streams. So better get it right now. Better make sure we get all of the carving right on you because she's she's watching. She'll be telling me if I get it wrong. So as you can see, we're just taking away that waste wood that we don't want. We'll also have a decision to make because we're going to have little bits of wood left in between. And so we've got to decide what to do if, if, um, if that happens. That is a striking design and I can see why you would want to take it on. Yeah, I, I like the idea. As soon as they mentioned it, I thought, hmm, that sounds nice. I, I quite, I like, you may have noticed before, uh, when it comes to like designs, that's why I like that Celtic twist. That's one of my favorites. As well, and when I when I had this idea, I tell you what I might end up doing. See, this is why it's always good. That I always appreciate the the input from the carver. You always get me thinking, and I, I'm thinking now. And I think I may do. We do that collector's corner, and I think that something along these this sort of style might be nice in the collector's corner. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's something with that sort of surround. I can see it having a quite an appeal to people and also um, it's a bit of fun to carve and now see it's this is this is really what it's all about because this this gouge that I'm working with is a lovely gouge and it's one that I probably haven't used in in over a year but it just shows you know people will ask about gouges and stuff i'll just take a moment to i don't know if the camera is a bit small so the camera may not pick up on it and it definitely won't forget me head in the way um but it was made by jb addis and sons 
And it was made in Sheffield. And it is prize medals. And I can't quite make out the number on it. But it's a fantastic gouge. It's a lovely gouge, this one, dude. And it's one that we don't use very often. And we've got gouges there. And it's perfect for this job. It's just the right size and sweep for this, this particular job. So ideal for, for, for what we're doing. So we continue shaping this surround. And this seat, you know, if you're interested in wood carving, if you're learning wood carving, if you're, you know, at a good level at wood carving, people like the carver is, is a very good standard, of course. Um, you, you can use something like this. This is really nice for sort of decorating. Um, like for instance, I'm thinking in yourself there, the carver, I know you do different um, Christmas themed stuff. This is like a, this is like the, it, it reminds me of the, the Christmas, what do you call them that you put on the door? The holly wreath. Like a holly wreath. I, I could see something like this being adapted and used as like a, a decoration for Christmas. Yeah. Um, but then again, you've got to ask the money, you've got to get the money back on it for the amount of work that it's going to take. But that's the beauty then of working with, for instance, the scroll saw and the hand tools in combination, it allows us to... Um, As you were talking about um, pricing and that kind of thing, Dave. Yeah. Um, I don't know how people feel about it, but it's the grumpy old man speaking, by the way. Um, I, I was um, thinking people, you know, ask us to do various jobs. Oh, certain ones I just say no, because this is not practical. Yeah, but that is quite difficult. I don't know how other people find it. To say no... Oh, it is hard, yeah, very It is hard. quite difficult. Well, this one, if I didn't like the design... This is the truth. There we are. We tell the truth. Um, mistletoe. Yeah, spot on. Um, the, yeah, the, um, the truth with this one is as soon as they mentioned the idea, I had a, an idea in my head. Right. If I had been struggling, if I had been struggling with the concept, I'd have said no. Do you, do you understand? Yeah. I, I had a, I could see that... Um, well, it's a very important part of business, knowing when to say no. Yeah, it, it's, and it's one of the hardest things because we're always, we're always reluctant to turn work down. But there are times when um, there are certain occasions, there's certain jobs that we've done and that we've taken on, and hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to, you can see, we're just bringing these leaves together at the top. I don't know. Shaping them round, just like so. And we're going to do the same over the other side. So we're just shaping it round again. There we are. So I'm just getting a little bit of shape on that. Just like so. And then once we've done the other side, once we've gone down there, then we turn it around in the vise. And at that stage, hopefully, I should be getting a bit more confident in where we're going. So it's always an interesting thing, you know, we, we, when we're doing live streams, we don't sort of deliberately set it up where, you know, where, where we've done this job half an hour earlier that's why we do it in this way is you can actually see the the process you can see as well our thought process because that's that's a big part of it and that's why we do it this way so you can see that you know like um at different times i've started a carving and actually ended up changing the way i i'm doing it because i'm not happy with the way it's going i'm thinking the last time i did that we were working on the the globe and I wasn't happy with the method I was using, so I completely changed it. But that's a big part of wood carving then, is having a plan, but also accepting that sometimes a plan's not working. I'm trying to adapt. I can start to see that sort of, I can start 
to see where it is kind of coming together. We we'll have a line down there. Yeah, I can start to see how that, how how it's sort of taking shape. We'll say. So I think we're pretty good on that side. Time to now start working our way in this direction. And then afterwards, see the idea that I got in mind, just to share what, you know, to share my exact thought process. The idea I got in mind is to shape all of these leaves in one direction, shape it in the other direction. And then I'm possibly thinking, again, a gouge I don't often use, not this, shows you that I don't often use it. There we are. I will just show you, is that going to be in shot? Yeah, it is. I'm thinking of just scoring a little line using a V gouge, which is something you won't often see me using, is a V gouge. But this is a good live stream to demonstrate how always keep your gouges, never sort of get rid of your gouges if you don't use them very often, because as soon as you get rid of a gouge, the very next time you go to do a carving, you'll be thinking to yourself, I wish I hadn't got rid of that gouge. And it's uncanny how uh, gouges, they're invaluable and they can get you out of trouble. Because again, this gouge, one that I don't use at all frequently, but it's virtually carved this whole spoon. And it also tells you then, what's the value of a gouge? Well, in this case, this gouge is probably the difference between this job being worth doing and it not being ending up costing me money. So this gouge today is invaluable. So how do we put, you know, how do we sort of put a value on it? It's the same with other kit then where they can be really valuable to us because of the amount of time and effort that they sometimes save. So, as I mentioned, we're pretty much sort of at our limit when it comes to the bespoke spoons, that sort of thing. We've also then been working on some different fun projects. I've been doing a... Um, Christmas themed scroll saw video that was a bit of fun and then we've got another video where we're looking at some other scroll saw projects so that'll all be coming up on the channel in the coming weeks and months so you can see we're just shaking that one there you're spending quite a bit of time with that gouge there have you got a nick in it or something Ah, Thomas Woodcarver is working in the background there. He's sharpening up the gouges for us and he's uh, he's working with the Tormek, which again is a, another video we've got coming up. We've done a few videos on sharpening before, but this year we're, we're, we're doing a lot of, um, we're doing certain videos again because certain ones are getting a bit older now. And of course we've we've changed equipment, that sort of thing. So hopefully... Hopefully some of the videos are better quality now, so that'll be, uh, that'll be coming up. I got carried away with the water there. He's got carried away with the water and put too much on the Tormek. So I think now we've made good progress on there. I'm going to have a little look. I reckon I've been... Hello, Aubrey. Good morning, afternoon. Borada, Prananda, depending on where you are. Or possibly even Nostar depending on where anybody else is as well. Hope all is well. Thanks for joining us as always. So I think we've got most of it shaped in that direction, but instead of now turning it round, now this is interesting because Thomas Woodcarver's got a gouge with him that I would like to be using. So again, here we are. This is a bit of a, a little bit of a sort of swan neck shape to it. I'm gonna use this one it's the same sort of shape and size, so it can do the job. So I should have renamed this live stream. And this thing, we never know what's going to sort of happen and where live streams are going to go. I should have renamed this one to a live stream of using all the gouges that I never normally use. Or Amazing, isn't it? It could also be how to get your servant to sharpen the chisels you 
don't normally use. We, 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 we could call it that. That's the disgruntled voice of Thomas the Woodcarver there. It's amazing, isn't it, that doing a carving like this and virtually every gouge that I get I think it was the, the other one. Yeah, I tell you, this happens when we're doing our own annual spoon. Right. Oh, they, quite often, because they're different shapes and sizes, our you annual tend, one. You tend to be looking for something. We, we tend to be doing all sorts of shapes and size. Um, like, we'd have to, we'd have to show a few. Do you, want to show, do you want to show a few? I'm looking for a few different ones that really get used in there, yeah, but that one there. they're absolutely, uh, you'd have to be mad to get rid of them because you can guarantee as soon as you get rid of them, they'd have been useful. Well, there is one there now. When do we ever use that one, Dave? There we are. How do you ever use it? Beautifully made. And look, it's an internal, what do they call it? Incar, incarna, incarnal? Yeah, we call them an internal gouge, but they've got a specific name I mean, that and they've got a specific one. job. I mean, there's a nice one there now, but what make it? Ah, no, that's a cheeky. Yeah, that's why we don't use it so much. You want to put that one Made up? in England. There you go. That's all it says, made in England. We hardly ever use it. Well, there's nothing wrong with that then. No. It's a good gouge. That's a good gouge. Well, there's a lovely gouge. Look, that one there, Addis. Now, we yeah. hardly ever use that one. And what it is, we've got similar gouges that do a similar job. And part of it as well, with what happens... Oh, this is a brilliant one here. Is that this we... This is England. We, we get into... Again. There it is, Dave. What that happens as well is you... Oh, yeah, that's a well, nice that's, one. When, when we're doing a, a, a larger sort of... A larger project, bowl. That's ideal then for... Now, I would, call, I would say that that's number six. Right. But I always get mixed up because they... One thing they never do, they don't put a line to say whether it's a six or a nine. I'd love it. I'd love them to actually put a a line on it. I think it's a six from the sweep. I just did a video about a you month or so ago. Out. You could you so could get another one with a number on. Yeah, and see how different it is. And see. Well, basically, the reason I say about that is I did a video on, about right? a month ago, and I called all of the all of them number sixes because I wasn't hundred percent. But after I finished filming it, I wasn't hundred percent sure by the time I'd finished, whether they were sixes or actually nines. So... Well, I would say, if you look at those two... Right. Show everybody those two with the numbers on. What does it tell you? Number four and number six. Yeah, because the, the number, look, is facing... Ah! Thomas Woodcarver's worked it out for me. I can see where you're coming from. So it's number four, number six. Yeah. So if it was a number nine, it would be around the other way. Yeah. And as you look at it, yeah. as you're looking at the chisel, that's so you're looking at the number the right way. Ah, look. We learn something new. We learn something new every time. I think you're right there. I think you're probably right on that one because, um, yeah, it, it's... I, that's, that's good because I did the whole video and then when I was editing the video, I was looking at them thinking, I'm not 100% sure whether that's, that would be a six or a nine. I didn't think it would be a nine, but it, it wasn't clear. But I can see where you're coming from. As you're looking down the blade, like so, this one, for instance, is number three. So it would be a number six, because that's the way the number's facing. So you can see we're just working now. Nothing on this particular spoon is particularly straightforward, because it's quite a hard piece of oak. Yeah, do you, do you know where that one came from? One there, look. Yeah. And that's definitely a three. Number three. And, and as you look down there, and it's facing you. So, yeah. It's, it's so, I simply am so clever. The old, Mystery solved. But the old, you know, the old systems they systems, use. They're so... Um, and I mean, here in the UK, we have some fantastic tool makers. Yeah, and sense. there are some good tool makers still around in the UK, but most of most of them have disappeared, unfortunately. We've lost a lot of those sorts of skills. Let's have a look. Oh, I gotta show you that one. That's a cracker, dude. Have that one there? Yeah. The, the number, the numbers there, facing you. Number two. Look at that. And that's an SJ Addis, so that would have been made in London. Yeah, there we are. And again, a gouge, a really, well, almost a chisel, that one, really. 
Yeah. More of a more of a chisel in many ways, but um, one that we rarely use. But I there's certain jobs that it does. So for instance, because we're in Wales, one of the emblems here. Have a look. Have a look at it. Look it up on Google if uh, if you haven't seen it before. You've got the Prince of Wales feathers. So yeah. that one is ideal for doing the middle of the the middle feather. And there's another job. I've used it for doing like the bottom of houses and cottages because that's another simple little carving that we do. And the Prince of Wales feathers you mentioned. I don't know whether you've told everybody before. Sometimes, depending what part of Wales you're from, can be quite co controversial. So I have to. We can explain indeed. Why, no? You do, yeah, sorry, uh, that, that was my fault. I think you were waiting for me to, to say, to ask you why, but I was having a drink. Sorry about that. Yeah. It's a very hot day. Yeah. Come yeah. on then, Thomas, well, explain as, to everyone. As you know, of course, the, um, the Welsh feathers, the emblem that a lot of people, especially the rugby team, actually uses the um, Welsh feathers on its um, chest, On the jersey. On the jersey. And underneath they have the words "ich bin," and uh, that, of course, is quite sort of um, at certain parts of Wales, well-speaking people don't uh, use that and accept that because "ich bin," although to most people it looks Welsh, it's actually German. It means "I serve," and so I think it goes back about uh, how many years? Do six hundred or so? I don't know how many years it goes back. I'm not sure. No, I don't. I don't I, I, it's probably a more recent emblem. I would have thought the Prince of Wales feathers. It's one of the, when it's you were one of the, No, I think, I, I'm not sure which one. No, it's one of the wildy. Um, oh, well, you're thinking of the English. the current family. It would no, have gone back. The English um, kings would it, and queens that would have used. It would have been the German line you see in the royal family. That's what I'm trying to work out. Would it? it would it only go back to um, the current? Family, so no, I'm not sure. I mean, the wind, might, the Windsors, what were they? The Habsburgs, aren't they? Habsburgs and the Habsburgs and all this kind of thing. I don't know enough about it, but that's the always the dispute because Prince, the Prince of Wales, the last Prince of Wales, apparently held the baby up and used the words. Um, I think it would be a different pronunciation, a slightly different spelling. But that would be Eichbein, which meant your man. Yeah. And so, um, as I say, it's something that uh, doesn't bother us down here in Pembrokeshire, which is Little England beyond Wales. But in certain parts of Wales, obviously, it would be um, slightly controversial. Yeah, so, so there we are. And of course, the Prince of Wales is, is not Welsh. I should mention, I use He's spoons. Welsh, yeah. I make spoons. And what do we use spoons for? Stirring, of course. So, you know... Stirring the uh, milk. Was Prince there. Wales? He's not Welsh. No, no, no. There we are. What have we got on there? There was a Masonic symbol on that number two. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, you're spot on. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, you've got the um, the compass. Isn't it? The compass and yeah, it is. It's, it's got the Masonic. Oh, yeah. You've got the Mason symbol. Tell you what, the carver's got a good eye. Not much gets past you there. Fair play. Got past me, I didn't even notice it. Just as well you were, you were watching more closely. You see it? Yeah, but would that have been more linked to the fact... Ouch, you cut me break my finger now. <laughs> He's just sharpened them, so it's a clean cut. Um, would that be more linked to, you know, where um, the Freemasonry sort of started from? Um, you know, being uh, trades. Quite possibly. I think that may be... Uh, Very interesting, though. A bit of a link there, isn't it? Very interesting. Now, I'm hoping that my plan on will now start to come together. Because if not, it, it's time to panic. Because we're going to start carving everything back in the opposite direction. So hopefully, that will start revealing... We're having a little bit, now for instance here, I'm noticing that just because of the, the direction of the grain, it's wanting to carve down into the wood. So I'm gonna to have to come back in the opposite direction on things like the A here to tidy it up. Because it's just wanting to chew. You haven't got to the point where you're losing money yet, have you? Um, what, what time are we on? <laughs>
five, five past five. We're on five past three our time. So I'm, I'm okay at the moment. I'm okay at the moment, but it's going to be, um, it's going to be close. No, I mean, the point is, you're not, you know, you're not going to be losing me anyway, because, um, at the end of the day, it, it takes as long as it takes. We'll have to ask everyone who's watching. You'll have to w watch all of the adverts for us, and then we, we, we manage to get a bit back off Google for it. There you go. That's what we'll have to do that's, here. That's why that graph goes up and down, is it? No, that's, <coughs> no the, the, the graph, that tells us how many people are... Uh, switching on. Uh, right are switching switch. on or off. Yeah. So you can usually tell when Thomas the Woodcarver gets political because there's a big dip in it. That's, yes. that's when he starts getting controversial. That's when the numbers start dropping off. No, that's, that's, that, that's the highlights. Yeah. That's the highlights. That's the best bit. We'll have to do a highlights reel of uh, <coughs> Thomas Woodcarver's. We we'll, we we'll do a highlights reel of Thomas Woodcarver's views. I know I know that we do have a few. There we go. Well, I I. I know I, that we I have. Go, well, before you go, we, we do have some viewers from from South America. See, and it was one a good day. One a good day on the weekend, was it? Oh, boys! We got we got a bit of a we got a bit of a lesson from Argentina. Yeah. yeah. Can you stop growing those men out in Argentina as big as they were? Oh dear me! We were struggling on the weekend in the rugby. It wasn't good. So you see what we're doing now. We're working back in the opposite direction. Hopefully, the um, the plan will start to come together. This is something that, again, we get used to with, with the spoons, where um, you get to the stage, and then you hope, anyway, that things sort of come together. So we've got a lot of elements started. And it's a little bit... It's my... It's my approach to things as well, where, like, you can you can organise it where you... I, I could have, for instance, organised this, so I did all of the leaves, or did one leaf at a time. So you can organise your work in different ways. Sometimes I carve from top to bottom, or bottom to top. Um, but be, generally speaking, because I sit to carve... I do all my carving in the one direction and then turn it round to do all the carving in the opposite direction. There's one leaf here I've missed, so um, I'll have to go back over that one. So yeah, we're... Uh, I like it though. I am. I'm, I'm, I know this is self-praise is no recommendation or anything like that. I'm not saying the carving's any good, but I like the... I'm starting to like the idea. Feels like it's really coming together for us. There you go. So you can see, we're just getting those leaves to go the opposite way. And the only, the main thing I'm thinking on now is how we're going to get, um, I can just see that carving block just needs to come out a little bit. The soapbox moments are my favourite, so I'll pass the message on. Probably linked to the guild aspect, Thomas has found. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I, I, I would, yeah, with the, um, I mean, with the, the, the masons and things like that, they would have, because it's stone masonry, isn't it? So the, the tools, they would be made, they would be making for stone masons as well, I would think, the tool makers. Interesting note, I haven't seen that symbol on many... Um, on many of the gouges and tools. It's quite, um, in different different times here, different areas, quite a big thing, the, the, uh, the, the Freemasonry. So you can see we're just shaping everything back in the opposite direction. We're also going to have to think about, you know, there's little bits of wood left over here so how we're going to sort of tidy those bits up 
but hopefully they will tidy up as we're shaping the leaves. That's my hope. We just get a little bit, you can see there where we're just coming back the other way. It's just cleaning up, cleaning up the finish. And all in all, it is starting, well, from my perspective, it is starting to take shape. It is starting to come together. I'm starting to think now about getting sort of elements of it actually finished. So the same on the, we get these letters finished. Where we're working on that, it just gives you the feeling that it's basically the, the, the spoon is working better. It's just the nature of the grain. It's working better in that one direction than in the other. Argentina at least has, yeah, they do. Patagonia, one of the official languages out there, is Welsh. We've recorded that on one of our spoons as well, Aubrey, with the, um, that was going back to 2015, but it was 200 years since the Mimosa took the Welsh settlers out to Patagonia. So we recorded that on our love spoons because there, there were a few sort of celebrations of 200 years since Welsh settlers went to Argentina. Was it 200 or 150 years? Or was it? I'm not sure. Well, Thomas Woodcarver is saying it may be 150 years. I, I honestly don't know on that front. But I know. 1865. It oh, was. there we are. So you're right. 1865. 100, 150 years. I was adding a 50, year, 50 years on to it. And it's still, it's Spanish and Welsh, the two official languages there in Patagonia. Now I'm thinking with this that there's aspects of it that are starting to take shape. In some ways, I'm, and this is where, where we, we, we talk about having to change plans and stuff like that, because what I'm thinking of possibly doing, shaping everything back this way, and I might end up flattening the middle of the leaf and then using the gouge, the skewer one. I recall hearing that during the Falklands, many of the conscripts were from the Welsh area of Patagonia who were ter treated by Spanish-speaking officers. During the war, conscript troops received kind attention from the Welsh. Ah, so there's a, there's, yeah, there is still that strong link there. Definitely. I think it's the second biggest Welsh speaking community in, in the world, I believe. I may be wrong on that one there, but it is it's, uh, definitely an official language, Welsh of Patagonia. So we're going to start working down this other side as well. And again, highlights with the love spoon, how it's a great tradition because it can cater for so many different things. So people will have an idea. They will have a, a sort of design in mind. And the love spoon, you can, you can accommodate it. You can cater for it. Oh, well, of course, as well, with the... Uh... A terrible thing in the situation out in Germany. Oh, that's awful, Europe. yeah. Because we had, we used to have a chap by the name of Johan. Remember, he used to, he, he, he used to make. Uh, yeah, dreadful. Was he used to go on holiday over here, and he used to help. Well, we used to help him to make a spoon. Yeah, he yeah. Across, and I was such a nice chap. He was. Uh, I mean, and he was from that area, Cologne. So, uh, I mean, we never kept in touch, but I. I hope they're, uh, they're, hoping they're, they're, there. they're okay because it's yeah. yeah dreadful scenes. And um, likewise, Belgium as well. Belgium, yeah. As well. I think they were saying that the, the Austria as well. There was flooding. Yeah, I mean, it's just terrible. Well, it's unusual for us to hear things like that. You know, it's sort of uh, yeah. not expected at this time of the year. No, we don't. And it was the um, crazy weather. Yeah. Because we. At the moment, we're having, we're normally complaining, where's our summer? And yeah. this year, we, we, we've actually got more settled weather. Yeah, but uh, hopefully, um, 
I'm just wondering how they're going to, um, you know, what, what, what sort of ideas they got to try and prevent that happening. Again. Um, I know you can't stop the rain, but at least you can, um, I mean, they were concerned about the dams that were there, weren't they? So. Terrible thing. Yeah, you know, there was a dam in our country just a few years back that was had to be um it was in Derby. I think it was Derby, yeah. They were dropping those big sand bags in to try and uh, prop it up. Prop it up, yeah. Ah Alfredo's there. Hola, buenas tardes. Or maybe buen buenas dias. Because I said we got um, different people joining us here from different places around the world. And uh, yeah. as we mentioned, not a good day uh, for our rugby team. Oh dear, no. On the weekend. Now, we're looking now. I think we're nearly there with the hearts. We got them pretty well shaped. Then the same, a lot of the one side I got shaped. And um, where do those two go there? Uh, that one goes in there. We've got a lot of this shaped on the one side then. And now we're going to have to try and match it up on the other side. I think that one goes there as well, isn't it? Yeah. You can hear in the background possibly there as well. There's different farm Bring farm the machinery. Oh, the They're all busy, the local farmers, because uh, of this good spell of weather. My brother Math as well, being a beekeeper. He, uh, hopefully the bees will be busy bringing in the, the honey as well. So, all good productive times, we hope. So you can see, we're just going to go down the side here and shape these leaves as well. I'm also thinking in my mind where um, where we go with certain parts of it. For instance, we've got to have a little think of, um, do I flatten these leaves back off to, to do that detail? So what I'm contemplating is to flatten the leaves like that. Let's finish a leaf. Flatten it like that. And then just do a little line like that. Yeah, like that. That's what we go with. So we're going to flatten all the leaves back off. So we've shaped it one way. We've shaped it the other way. And then we're going to flatten it all off. And we we'll just do a little bit of detail afterwards. There we go. So saying all of these leaves just fit. We're, we're getting towards now the finishing stage. And I'm checking the time as well. Are we are we still on target? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. The main thing now, we're well on with the project and we just want to get it finished to the highest possible standard that we can. So that, that's where the, that's where our focus goes on to. It's worked out quite quite well for us. Just noticed as well. Where's my good gouge gone? This one. This was the one I was working with earlier. Yeah, that one's going to help me out. This is what happens, see? I'm not concentrating on what I was doing for a moment. And I've been doing those leaves with my regular gouge, but it'll be easier and better. Yeah, easier to shape it with these ones. It's just a better shape for the job. Habits, so you get into your, you get into routines, you get into habits that you're used to. And then, Dave, yeah. Can you just wait down? This is not looking okay. Something there? Yeah. 
I got it in an email, I think it was hanging up on the wall. Oh, there, there we are. It's, what you're saying is. We'll just see. We're just going to shape all on the inside of the heart. So this is the uh, the nature now of the workshop because we're open now as well. We got different people we're contacting for different jobs we've done. Here, I don't know where where it is. Different parts of the world you're in. We're starting to see more occasions happening as well. So everything sort of um, opening up more. A lot more actually here in the UK, so that's that's leading to us being a little bit sort of busier with different requests, that sort of thing, which is good because it's been very quiet. Flatten and hit with the V. That's gonna look gonna look sharp. Yeah, that's 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 the plan. Um, I'm gonna tell you what. This gouge, I've got, to go, I've got to use this gouge more often because it's a fantastic one to work with and I love, I love the shape, the size and the feel of it. So that's going to be a really, um, a really good one for us, this. What you can see as well, where we're working here, I've got quite a lot of um, bits of detail there's little bits that need tidying up. So in and around where we've done the detail, there's little parts, different aspects of it that need tidying up. So hopefully we can sort that. So all down this side here at the moment, it's a little bit messy still. But as we're, as we're working on it, we can tidy up those bits of detail, get it all tidied up and then finish it all off. All in all, it's been a fun project to do. That's got to be a big part of what you do. You've got to enjoy it. Not the most straightforward of projects, not the most straightforward of pieces of wood, but when it's finished, when we've shellacked it, we don't even remember half of it. That's the nice thing about YouTube, we got a record. And I do sometimes do that when I'm, when we do the different time lapses especially and we put it together as a video, you look back on all the work you've done and you think, wow, that's quite a lot of work. So we carved in the one way, this direction, I'm finding that the wood is actually carving better in this direction than in the opposite direction. And with all of the, the little bits of detail then we're going to add, it should give the Love Spoon a real nice sort of detailed finish to it. Should give it quite an impressive sort of detailed look. So we're working there on the trumpet of the daffodil. A symbol that we're doing on a regular basis. What I do with the trumpet is to just try and Try and get it just to taper back into the leaves slightly. I also bevel the, not the leaves, sorry, the petals. So I bevel the petals of our daffodil, just like so. And of course you have those messages on a love spoon. You hope that love will blossom or continue to blossom. That's one of the messages behind having a, a flower style design so there we go we can just see that just going to take this the front of the trumpet just down a little bit we do the inside of the trumpet we just mark out the bits of detail with our old gouge that's seen better days but we still can't find a an adequate replacement And then I just do a few little lines on the daffodil, just to finish it off. So we've got one, two, three, and four. 
also going to just push the depth down a little bit on this one just to give it a nicer depth, nicer shape as well. Just like so. Now, we find our nice little gouge again, this one here. And I'm gonna finish off inside the heart. There's a few little bits, like for instance, that bit there where it's raised. Where it's a little bit proud. I got all the details for that, Dave. Fantastic. That's great. Um, if if you could grab me some shellac, okay. that'd be brilliant. So we get into that stage now where we're not far off being ready to shellac it. It's one of those ones as well where this particular one, they actually came into the workshop and we designed it with them while they were here. And that's something now that, that I do do from time to time. And I always think it's a good thing if you can do that. Whilst it does put you under a little bit of pressure where you're trying to sort a design whilst people are watching you, which is something that you know we're, we're used to doing. In the long run, it can, it can save you a little bit because people can actually see how much is involved in in the designing process then you know and if people get a, an idea and a grasp for how much time is is involved in every stage it always it always helps it's the same now when it comes to you know it, it, it's it, quite a bit of work on the back of that one as well yeah absolutely but i think it's always good for people to actually see you know, it's a labour, it's a labour intensive process and... A labour of love, Dave. A labour of love indeed. <laughs> Is there any song with that theme? A labour of love? Hmm. Who would have thought they'd have... There'd be a song called A Labour of Love. Can't think of one. Well, if you think about it, every love song is a labour of love, isn't it? You know? I suppose so. But I would have thought they'd have had one as the actual theme. How are we looking? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad. Well, high praise indeed. It's not good, but it's not bad. I, you know, again, a little tip for anybody. I mean, we often, at this stage, shellac the spoon to see um, how far we need to go because at the moment um, you know my eyes are not sort of um, seeing it brilliantly uh, and until you put the um, shellac on it, it it won't show you the depth that you've been carving yeah and it, it also um, uh, it, it doesn't always um, you know, what you want it to do is, is to get the leaves um, to be highlighted. Yeah. We've got a, we've got a plan for, for finishing off the leaves, see, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to flatten them. I'm going to flatten them down. And then we're going to just do a little, a little bit of work with the V-gouge, just to shape them, just to put a little line in the middle. Yeah. Will you... Um, you know, because every, anybody watching now, they're not going to see the finished item. So, how would they be able to see the finish um, finished item? Because you will, you will. Um, yeah, you, might, you could take you a will, put it on social media or something you like will that. Will video it, won't you? And uh, this is the video. We're yeah, it. but you will video the finished item. I mean, um, we, I may take a photo, put it on social media, something yeah. like that, so people can see yeah. something like that, because it's going to be. It's not much I can film now because no. um, I don't know. Although saying that, they're doing everyone's doing these short videos now. Um, the carvers put on their laugh out loud. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm working with all the time. That's high praise. That is. If you get a not bad, you can uh, you can go home happy that it's uh... actually. I, you know that is quite a nice. Um, 
That's too late now. You, you've got, it, you, it is you, quite a nice you, spoon, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, it's, you, you, I presume you are enjoying carving that one because... That's oh, nice doing something different. And it's not so much you enjoy the carving, but you... you it's you, nice you seeing it all come... It's, it's nice seeing it all come out. Yeah, it, it's quite... Um, it's quite a bit of depth. I could see us doing... I could see us doing a spoon. Um, I could see us doing a spoon for the collector's corner... Yeah. Using a similar style, but just making it adapting it to take off some of the restrictions on us. Um, I, I, I don't want to please you too much, but uh, as you were doing that, I was I was thinking it's sort of uh, Grinling Gibbon style. Grinling Gibbons when he when he'd had a few many too too many drinks or something was it? Yeah. Or the, it was the apprentice having a crack at it. That's right. No, it's like you know what I mean. It, it is. It's the that sort of detail that they the, used to the do. The detail that you would see on uh, old, older carvings, then you know. Well, an interesting thing, isn't it? We learned with Grinling Gibbons. He used to stick pieces of wood together. Yeah, I was quite surprised. I didn't so, realize. So, so whenever any of you look at his his work, don't 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 despair because because that's heck of a lot easier if you can stick yeah. stuff together. Yeah. Yeah. Because he did some fantastic stuff. Him very, and his, very often, you him know, and his, uh, his, his group. Right. Flowers were built up then, you know. They were, yeah. Which we didn't realise until recently. But uh, still fantastic work, but gives it a different, slightly different perspective, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it just shows that they were human. That's right. So you can see, we're just going to flatten all these leaves down, like so, and then once we've got a flat surface, then I can use that flat surface. One problem I have as well, I'll have to go back over, and I always have to do this in my work, I have to sand everything, because I've been carving a while, my hands start pulling all the oil out of the gouges, it's just my skin type. And especially today, because it's a hot day here. Yeah. And this I, I, again, I, I, I know it's perhaps one of those things. Probably you, you want me to just shut up and not say anything. But um, pricing, again. Um, no, this one I knew from the outset we were having issues when it came to the pricing. Like you, 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 you can. We try to be as fair as possible, like you know. Um, You're accommodating. And, and the majority, people. the majority of people are reasonable. You know, they, they yeah. would say, "Oh well, you know, um, if it's you know if it takes a little bit longer, you know, yeah, we're it. we're quite happy." You know, you give an estimate of a hundred pound, we'll say. Yeah. And and they say, you know, I I'd rather get it right. Yeah. I'd rather it. you be happy with it. Yeah. Uh, and we do it the other way as well. You know, we give an estimate sometimes between, we'll say, uh, eighty to a hundred pounds. Well, I and, think, and if we we don't, if it doesn't take as long, then we I think it shows you where um, the um, where, where when we're talking about that. I reckon that's the single thing we talk about most on our on our live streams. Right. So doesn't that it tells you something, doesn't it? Yeah. Where where pricing is the hardest part of the hardest part of the process. Yeah. Because you, know, you, you put your car in the garage and uh, you just you know you just sort of um, hope and pray that. Uh, well, it's a lot cheaper if they can repair it than them telling you, and you you tend to accept you tend to accept the price, don't you? Because at the yeah. end of the day, you. Yeah. If they turn around and say, oh, I can't do anything with it, that's a heck of a lot more expensive. Yeah. Right, so we got some little, I'm just gonna put a single line now down each of the leaves. The most important one with this one though is that, that's the V-tool now, yeah? We're using a V-tool. Have you shown everybody you got the V-tool now? Yeah. Yeah, it's so not an easy, Chisel to sharpen, really. It's quite a. Um, what make is that particular chisel, Dave? Oh, I reckon that's a Herring Brothers. Yeah, that's a Herring Brothers. There we are. 
and that's that, that's a nice they, they were yeah. such good tool makers the herring brothers that Good into work. But you're now carving right across the grain. We're going across the grain yeah. there, so just so tearing a little bit then. Pretty spot on. Yeah. Saying that, if you do tear it, you can you can use a, a, a straight flat chisel to um, sort it out. Sort it out. There is just just pulling a little bit, yeah. but nothing. The other interesting thing as well, of course, is, is that. If you're doing something like this, you don't want to make a mistake, but if you do make the mistake, sometimes it means you have to go a little bit deeper. Yeah. And then the carving, you know, um, is enhanced for the fact that it is deeper, deeper. then, you know? So I, I think that's the way to be philosophical about uh, the work when you're, when you're doing something. Well, this has been... I, I, I've enjoyed this one, I'll be honest that's with good. you, sir. That's good. At the end of the day... If you can enjoy your work, you know, and and it, when we're sort of talking about the different things, it it gives us the opportunity to share something different when it comes to the carving, because this is like a project that you may want to take on yourselves, and that's the whole point with the uh, live streams is to show you something different, and this sort of style of decoration, this would be great, you know, all sorts of different types of carving that you might be doing. I can see areas where this style would be really good it would you know yeah. you could you could use this in all sorts of different ways so hopefully oak, oak that particular oak lends itself to this sort of yeah the carving you yeah it's, it's got enough character and enough there's enough depth of color there yeah um I, I, I wouldn't fancy doing that in line myself, you see. Possibly not, no. I know a lot of people would be happy, but you'd have to get a really good piece of line, a, a really dense piece then. We're timing it right, because that sun is just about coming in and going to spoil my uh, spoil my shot there. How long the have I got the idea? The perils of, uh, of filming on a, on a sunny day. I'll be fine, don't worry. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up against the clock now. In in other ways, you've got to get the job done before that sun comes across and blinds everybody. As it stands, going back to the carving, our oh, famous last words. That bit's pulled. As it stands, I'm, I'm quite happy with. Yeah, I'm quite happy with the way this is um, coming out. Where's the sun shining from then? Oh, God. I got it. Here we are. I've not got a shovel being uh, or a spade being held above my head. I've got to tell you a, a great story. My, my wife is, um, as some of you know, or a lot of you will know, my wife is from Barcelona. And um, when the sun comes out here, it's, it's quite a big event for Yelly. And she was delighted yesterday, and she she said, "Right, I'm going to go and uh, going to go and have a lie now in in the sun." And just as she was about to walk out the door, the sun literally went. There was the tiniest cloud in the sky, and as she walked out the door, what happened? Sun went behind the tiniest cloud you've you've ever seen. She was not impressed. So we've got little bits of tidying up to do. There are little bits. So, for instance, I can see just in where it, where is it? Um, just little bits of wood. Yeah, a little bit of wood just in there. So we've got little bits of tidying up. But by and large, that is the that gives you the general idea. So what I'm going to do, I, the reason I'm sanding over it is because my hands have left some different marks. We'll have to then, at a later stage, sand this bottom bit out, which may result in us having a bit of extra carving work to do. But by and large, I'm happy. I'm happy with what we've got there. You can see that lovely grain coming through as well. Um, all in all, yeah, nice bit of carving. Good fun to do. And I'm just going to put, just to finish off, we put a little bit of shellac 
on the face of it. Just so you can see, I put too much shellac on the brush again. Why do I always do that? I put too much shellac on. So you can see, just bringing out all of those bits of detail. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I think we're getting it. I'm happy with how that's coming up. And I think we've got some lovely character and some lovely details in that carbon. Great project to have a go at doing. And there's all sorts of different ways you can do it. And it, it's a great way of creating, if you're doing a carving and somebody asks, you know, this is something you can consider. Somebody asks for you to do something really intricate. Using methods like that, that gives it the impression of it being really intricate. Um, and you can see that's, that's done in a, in a few hours to, to get it to that sort of uh, stage. Around about, yeah, about an hour and a half, I think we'll be working on it. As always, thank you again for joining us. Hopefully that's useful. If you've got any questions, any thoughts or anything, get it into the comment section. Um, if I remember, I will take a photo of this one and we, we put it up on Instagram as well. So have a little look on Instagram if you want to see. If you want to see as well, um, the carvers on Instagram does some lovely stuff as well. So um, we're always promoting. And any of yourselves, if you're on different things of social media, let us know and um, we're, we're more than happy to um, share your information with people so they can have a little look at what you do as well. We'll have another video midweek, so have a little look at that. But thank you all again for joining us and um, have a good week. Anything to add, Thomas Woodcarver? Yucky da, good health. Yucky da. Thank you all again. All the best. <laughs>